All right, hello everybody. Welcome. We have uh, Matt here from Elevate as well as Hey CPA. How you doing, Matt? Good man. Good. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, thank you. So why don't you start off with uh, what do you do? Yeah, thanks. So uh, I run a boutique financial consulting firm called Elevate Financial, as you mentioned. So basically, what we do is we work with predominantly public companies, doing all their financials, so quarterly financials, MDNAs, and then also do a lot of controls work, so like financial controls or financial reporting. Um, so that's kind of like one area I've been focused on right now. Been doing that for a couple of years. Um, mm -hmm. And then recently, my partner and I, my girlfriend, just started Hey CPA, which is a job board specifically for CPAs. So trying to get those people who are just looking to exit um, a public accounting firm, they just got designated with their CPA. Um, I'm a CPA by trade, so resonate with them well and trying to place some in kind of some of the top companies and companies that like I would have applied for back in the day. So Awesome. I love that. So uh, quite a bit of uh, experience in the CPA sector for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of, of course, you know, we're, we're all we're all just kind of coming out of the tail end of COVID here. Um, what were some of the business kind of consider like how, first of all, how did that impact you and, and the way you guys do business? And what were some of the considerations you guys had to do um, because of the pandemic? Right. So I actually started Elevate Financial kind of like peak pandemic, mm -hmm. um, which was super unique timing. Like sure. it was August 2020 when I left uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers, my previous accounting firm I was at, um, and decided to strike out on my own. So it was a bit of a weird time to decide to do it, um, but it turned out well. So like instantly everything had to be remote. All my clients, um, the people who I kind of hired on as contractors, had to onboard them, train them remotely. Um, so that presents unique challenges in and of itself, trying to connect with clients as well. Um, you know, it wasn't like I could sit side by side with them at their office, learn the ropes. It was very much like a lot of this back and forth. Um, so that, that definitely took like a little bit of a learning experience there. Um, but then it was also, you know, seeing the client side of things. Like I have a, a couple brick and mortar um, clients that I help and deal with. Um, so they often, you know, they're getting shut down kind of on a consistent basis. One is a gym I work with. So seeing them battle through that, um, it was honestly quite inspiring. Uh, and it was a lot of fun kind of working through those challenges with them. Yeah, for sure. Kind of being that, that person in their, in their back pocket at all times. I love that. For sure. Yeah. We, especially even with the work we do here at Avid, we find a lot of times, uh, people do lean on their, their accountants quite a bit. Um, and not always just for financial stuff. Also like, you know, where do we get this plan done? Or like, we're looking for the specific, you know, key strategy or something like that. Like, do you know anybody who can help us with it? So it's really nice. For to sure. Do. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I find, uh, you know, for some of my clients, it's more like business advisory than it is actual accounting and full cycle accounting, which mm -hmm. is fun. I mean, I really like that part. So no complaints on my hand. Absolutely. No, that's awesome. That's awesome for sure. Now of those, um, you mentioned quite a few things that you guys did there of the kind of transitions, the way you did business being flexible. Were there any of those considerations or, or actions that you made throughout the pandemic that you've continued to do now that it's over, either because you found it to be a better way to service your clients, you found it was something that they enjoyed more or allowed you to provide an, a better service overall? Yeah, I'd say the remote aspect has allowed a higher quality service across like a broader spectrum of clients. Um, it's a huge time saver, right? Like you don't have to constantly go in that commute time. Um, even, you know, it's great sometimes to connect with people over lunch or whatever, but that can take two and a half hours. And I found clients also respected that aspect too. So if we can get something done, either A, an email, um, which a lot of stuff can be solved that way or to just, um, you know, chatting over Zoom. Uh, I found those two that we've really hung on to. That being said, there's still that personal connection that you can't really beat. So as soon as everything kind of started opening up, we definitely started seeing our clients more, but that aspect of um, basically remote first has allowed us to really scale in a way that's uh, sustainable as opposed to kind of running around. Absolutely. Yeah, we we definitely seen that a lot with the business owners and uh, all the clients we're working with. Really, it's it's kind of like you now have two options, whereas, you know, before it's like, oh, let's jump on a video call. I guess. Sure. Right. Whereas now yeah, it's like yeah. a really quick and easy option. It cuts down that time in between that commute, you know, all those 
all those things. So you can, you know, get appointments and stuff done much, much faster, much more efficiently, but there are other options there too. You can get together, you know, face to face is for sure. Really nice too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now of the, you've obviously been a business owner for, for a little while now of the time you've been a business owner, what would you say is one of the biggest learning lessons that you've had? That's a good question. Biggest. Okay. Can I give like three? I'll for be sure, quick. Yeah. Um, so I'd say thick skin is probably the most underrated quality of any entrepreneur. Definitely. You need to take so many punches on like a consistent basis. Um, like one example is, you know, when I first started getting going, I used cold email a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in it. I think it can really scale a business quickly, um, especially in the early innings. But, you know, I'll hear someone be like, oh, I sent out 10 emails, you know, one person kind of responded. And I'm like, that's amazing. Like yeah. that's 10% conversion yeah. rate. If you look at an e-commerce brand, for example, they'll get a million people to their website in a month, say, and if they convert on that 1.5 or 2% of those people, they're one of the top e-commerce brands in yeah, you know, the world. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. So it, I think sometimes small, smaller business owners like myself, we look at it in terms of like, it's more personal because you're talking to them or like you're actively sending out an email or if someone just visiting a website, you don't really, you know, there's no that personal connection, but you definitely have to take some things on the chin. You're going to have churn, even though you, you know, you think you offer like a very quality service. Some people will just be like, you know, I can't afford it right now. or like going a different direction and being able yeah. to withstand that part of it. Um, two is the consistency part. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you need to wake up kind of every day and just being willing to do a lot of like boring work to put it lightly. Um, people think, you know, entrepreneurship, you're just kind of wheeling, dealing. It's all sexy all the time. So it's not the case. A lot of the work is the same thing day in and day out. So just being able to like almost grind through that and yeah. know that on the other side that, you know, you will get there. And then the last one I'd say is um, like focus on actions, not outcomes. That's something that I definitely Ooh, I have like been that. focusing on a lot more lately. You know, I was always like, okay, you know, this month I want to get one more client or like this month I want to like increase my engagement by this or like, I mean, who knows, like even follower counts on social media. I'm not too active on like any of those, but like lots of people set those goals, but they're, I don't want to say they're useless because it's good to have goals, but it's better to be like, okay, you know, I'm going to post on LinkedIn every day this month, or like, I'm going to send out a newsletter every Friday for three months. I'm going to, you know, do 10 cold out reaches every week. And then, so if you tick those boxes, eventually you'll get to those outcomes. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you're just focused on outcomes, you can just get trapped in that kind of endless like negativity loop almost. For sure. You know, that, you know, that ties so well. And we have one of our, our big quarterly events coming up in Surrey, our growth club. That's all around um, 90 day planning for our business owners. And one of the reasons, one of the right. main reasons why we do it is, is first of all, to break down those big goals into quarterly goals so that they're, they're just more manageable. And part of that too is, you know, focusing on what the goals, but also having the right action plan so you can yeah. consistently take action towards it. You know, that's a, that's a beautiful last point as well. I love that. And we're almost at the end here. Um, before we go, uh, before we head to the last question, do you have any offers today for uh, anybody listening that maybe wanted to get in touch with you, Matt, or the best way for them to get in touch with you? Yeah, I'd say the best way to get in touch is through LinkedIn. I'm most active on there. Uh, yeah, constantly engaging with my community there. I also have a newsletter, um, and it's just matttompkins.me. So okay. I kind of release every week, and that's right now I'm documenting exactly how I'm building Hey CPA from the ground up. So exactly what I'm doing step by step, posting the revenue, how much we're making, how much we're spending, um, kind of giving that like lack of a better term, like building in public frame of mind. So people can be like, okay, like this is the software he's using. This is the strategies he's using to get clients. Um, so that's something that I've been really enjoying. And in terms of offer, it's like, well, if there's any other small business out there and they want to hire an accountant right now um, and they're in your network, I'd love to post their job on Hey CPA for free. So awesome. Love that. Amazing. Amazing, man. Last question. This is a big one too. So if you want to mention a couple things, go right ahead. What do you think is the most inspiring to you today? Or what is the most inspiring to you today? Mm, that's a good question too. Um, today, I think it's been, one of them has been seeing my clients come out on the other side of COVID. So like I mentioned, I have two brick and mortar uh, clients who it's one thing when you're running a business and you screw up and you're like, mm -hmm. you know, like, 
shouldn't have done that. That was my fault that I lost that client, my fault I lost that sale. But when you have a third party, and in this case, the third party was the government coming in and being like, you're shut down and you can't really do anything about it, that definitely hits different. Um, and it goes back to the part of the thick skin. Um, so seeing those companies come out of the other side and honestly have both of them had their best years ever in uh, yeah. like their best physical years ever in the end of 2020 or the like the 2022 year end. Um, and so seeing that has been super inspiring. And then I've been noticing a trend lately of just more and more people uh, kind of shooting their shot for lack of a better term. They're, you know, they might be employed, but they're working from home and they just had, you know, now they're not commuting. They don't have all the meetings. They have more time on their hands and they're building all these projects and doing it out, out in the open. So you can kind of follow them along similar to what I'm doing, but some of the other people are like, you know, they're building these crazy SaaS products and stuff. So something like that, I've been super inspired by. And a lot of them are super young, early 20s, even, you know, late teens. And so I, I love seeing that. Amazing, man. Amazing. That is, uh, it's great to hear stuff like that inspires you. Definitely inspires yeah. us as well. Well, thank you so much for the time today, Matt. All of your uh, contact info for anybody uh, listening will be uh, below. So if and you want to get in touch with Matt, uh, all his contact info will be below in the card. And I uh, just thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. Perfect. Thanks. Appreciate you having me on.